In this video, you'll learn some important topics in mathematics and computer science. Don't panic, it's not that hard, I promise. And before you ask why you should care about these things, it's because using them you can win a bet. Challenge a friend to cut a hole in a piece of paper, and the one with the largest hole wins. Now, your friend will probably do something like this. You, on the other hand, will cut along this pattern. I do it by folding the paper along the longer side first. In this way I'm doing less cutting because the pattern is symmetrical. First I do these long cuts. Careful not to go all the way. Then I flip it around and cut in between. Again, careful not to go all the way. And then these small cuts right here. The shape will then open up and you can spread it out quite a bit. You basically make a long string from the paper. And my father pointed out it's like in the legend of how the ancient city of Carthage was founded. I'll add a link to the story in the description if curious. Now, if you really want to win big, set the stakes so the loser has to fill the winning hole with candy or something. And now things start to get serious. I mean, what shape should we spread this to get the most candy? My intuition says it should be a circle. But is it really so? To the laboratory! Let's experiment a bit. The circle idea sounds nice, but if it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. I'm using this miniature setup here, and to measure the area I just count the purple beads inside. This touches on the circle packing problem, but we won't get into that today. So that's it for the triangle shape. But if I play around with it like this, to make four sides, more beads fit in. Looks like more sides the better. Actually, if I force the beads in like this, the shape naturally turns into a circle. So we're good. The idea seems to hold, but can we prove it? To do that, I'll add the beads on a string and use them to define the border from now on. I do this because it's easy to measure how long a segment is in this way. Let's also mark the area here on a graph. You can see how it changes when I try different configurations. Now, this shape is concave, because it caves in here like this. It can hold water. Look what happens if we flip concavities along this line. See how the area increases? Our goal is to find the largest possible area, so let's do the flip. There's another one here. I'll repeat again and again until our polygon becomes convex. Because the area increases with each move, this process is called hill climbing. And now we are at the top of the hill, so we can't go anywhere from there. Any flip would just take us downhill. The problem is, this isn't the shape we're looking for. Look. If we start with some other configuration, and flip a few times, we end up at a different shape with a larger area. There's an infinite number of starting configurations, so instead of trying all of them out, I'll show you another move we can do to get us higher right here. Check this out. If we break this chain in half, that is, the same number of beads on each side, one area is larger than the other. So we can rearrange this to mirror the better half and get a really nice improvement. Now, see this concavity here? This means the flip operator works again. It's because the new move took us on a different hill. You can think of these in higher dimensions, but it's quite abstract, so I won't insist on it. Just notice how the new move helped us out. And now we could flip, or mirror here, since this area is also larger than this one. I'll just do the flip and repeat for as long as I can. Shape is now convex, but we can still mirror here once, and that's it. No matter how we break this chain in half, the two areas are now always equal. So we're stuck again, and there's an infinite number of shapes like this we can land on, all with different areas. We still have some work to do. But the good news is that now I can show you a third move. Let's focus on one half and this angle right here. The problem with this angle is it's not 90 degrees. 
You see, if I break the shape into sections like this, and pivot these outer parts like scissors, their area never changes, but the triangle's area does. The area of a triangle is the base length times the height. If this is the base and this is the height, the base stays the same, but the height changes, and the maximum height is when this is a right angle. That will be our third move. If an angle isn't 90 degrees, we scissor it to be 90 degrees, and mirror the change on the second half as well. A kind of compound operator, if you will. Now, the other moves started working again, same as before. I'll just use the mirror because it solves the flip as well, and looks like we're here again. But we can spread this angle here a bit, this one too, let's close this one here a bit, and this one here. Every time we do a move, the area becomes a tiny bit larger. But it can't go on forever, it has to stop at some point, and that's when all angles are 90 degrees. So the process always ends at this shape, no matter what our starting configuration is. So what is this shape? Well, it's a shape where all these are right angles. And right triangles have an important property, that this median is half the length of the hypotenuse. So all these points are the same distance from a center point. Thanks for watching. I've also made an interactive version of today's demo on my webpage. You can make any shape you want using the mouse and then start applying operators. Let me know what you think. I've been planning to make a full course on the circle and how I use it to program all kinds of applications. Like, I used what we learned today to make the game about drawing portals, to measure how round the shape is. Check it out if you're into coding. This video was supposed to come out much later, but I thought it'd make a good entry for the Summer of Math exposition hosted by 3Blue1Brown, so I prioritized it over other things. Wish me luck and see you guys!